Welcome to episode six of Nittany Sports Now's Victory Again podcast. I'm Joe Smelter, joined by Brandon Walker. Things turned out awful for Penn State last Saturday, and they'll be even worse with a loss this coming Saturday in the whiteout against Minnesota. We'll talk about Minnesota in the game this week, but before that, Brandon, let's talk about Saturday's game, this past Saturday's game at Michigan, the massacre at Michigan, if you will. Because it's something that, even though this is Tuesday night, and usually by Tuesday night, fans have kind of moved on from the last week's game. But this is an exception, and Penn State fans are still not over what happened in Ann Arbor this past weekend. Well, yeah, they, they are not in it, and it shows with Facebook and everything. Uh, it was just a beatdown. I, I thought it, everybody thought it was going to be a touchdown field goal game. You were partially right. You even you said it was going to either be a blowout or by Michigan or a close Penn State win. Yeah, and I wish I had picked a blowout, not to cut you off, but I picked a close Michigan win because picking a blowout in a big game just didn't feel right. But if I went with my gut, uh, like you said, I would have been a close Penn State mi- win or a Michigan blowout. And if I picked a Michigan blowout, I'd feel a lot kind of – smarter better about myself but i didn't so i'm gonna tell you what I, when i saw michigan's offensive line and i saw it was just the only person that could like literally line up eye to eye for these guys is mustafa yeah like what chop marvis is what 240 isaac goes about 245 or something like that out I, I forget what they're listening on the website but they 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 look small yeah. I was like, no. And Franklin talked about that after the game. He said his quote was, everybody thinks they're Aaron Donald, and there's only one Aaron Donald. So Penn State's got to get bigger up front to match up with uh, teams like Michigan, no question. Is that coaching the, pro- the nutrition program, or is that recruiting? Probably a little of both. Uh, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't really call Penn State's uh, weight training, nutrition, what have you program in the question because you look at what guys like uh, Micah Parsons, Mike Isicki, Saquon, what they did at the Combines in the past. Um, obviously, the guy that used to run Penn State's uh, strength, strength program, excuse me, Dwight Galt, he retired, but Chuck Lousey worked under Galt, so they should be okay in that department. Um, I wouldn't chalk too much up to that. I just think they need to recruit bigger bodies, so – yeah, I guess so. Cause it, his day did not. I saw. I saw. I look. Cause what do I do? Some. I. I mean, I kind of scout. But look, when I look, I look at the big boys up front. When I saw that, I'm like, uh oh. I was like, you yeah, know, I was like, we just talk about. I was like, there is no way, they're going to swallow these guys up. And they're going to swallow the linebackers up. We saw what happened. Yep, and that's exactly what took place. So, uh, obviously, James Franklin's getting a lot of heat, as he would for any Penn State loss, but it feels like it's a little more intense this time around. Uh, You know, Brandon, you had a lot of thoughts, still have a lot of thoughts on James Franklin that you shared on our site in a column that I think has been by far the most read article in the history of Nittany Sports Now. If you haven't read it yet, uh, check it out. Uh, Basically, you thought your thoughts are that Franklin got exposed Saturday, and I know you've already shared them in writing, but with your voice, uh, kind of talk about what your feelings are of James Franklin and what where Penn State football is under him. Uh, basically, a lot of people, what I thought about it is this. He's all talk. He, he's not enough action for me. Not a great X's and O's great. Like, he's more of a cheerleader guy. Like, he's a... Uh, I don't know what the code. I don't want to say he's more of a cheerleader than the X's and O's. Good recruiter, but you got to deliver results in the league on consistent base. You can't be going against top five teams and lose all the time because because that was an out coaching issue. And I don't think he prepared. I know he wants to recruit, which is good to do, but you got to worry about the people that you have on game day as well when the season starts there's a time and a place for recruiting all the time 
Yeah, and Franklin's job status is not in question pretty much no matter what happens this season because of the co- the 10-year contract uh, extension he signed last November. Uh, so that's not really a debate. Uh, but our uh, the Sports Now Network, uh, one of the owners of our network, Alan Saunders, pretty much summed it up pretty well on Twitter uh, not long after Penn State's loss in Michigan. He said Penn State needs to decide whether it's okay being a good program or if it wants to be one of the best programs in the country, like right up there with the Ohio State's, Michigan's, uh, Alabama's, Georgia's, like Tennessee's entering that path now. Oh, well, I wanted to say that. I wanted to stop. Thank, I'm, glad, I'm glad you mentioned that because there was a lot of stuff in, that, in my article that I wanted to do. Or, or mm-hmm. If I wrote every, it would have been like, it would have been an essay. It would have been like a three, 2,000 words. So you talk about Tennessee. You see what Tennessee did when they play an elite program We'll see. They have to play Georgia because he came in there and went blow for blow for them. That's what that is what you want your program to be. You had two teams that we saw on Saturday. One stepped up to the plate, and then Penn State didn't. Yeah, and Tennessee, Brandon, is kind of an interesting analogy, too, because going back about 15 years, Tennessee decided Phil Fulmer wasn't good enough. They pushed him out. And the next decade plus after that, Tennessee's just now going, getting back to being an elite program. So that's kind of ties into the decision that Penn State, I don't want to say it's a decision because Franklin's job status is not in question right now. But basically, Penn State's always going to be a good team, I think, under James Franklin. They'll beat the Maryland's, they'll beat the Rutgers's, they'll beat Michigan State a lot of years, Uh, teams like Minnesota, they should, in theory, beat. They should be ahead of those programs, but they haven't been at Ohio State's level for a long time, and Michigan has completely left them, which I wrote on the site after Saturday's game. So it's something that we've seen in college football. You know, Nebraska was winning under Bo Pelini, but they didn't think they were winning enough, so they showed him the door. Look where Nebraska is now. Uh, Texas and Mac Brown, kind of the same type of deal. So it's just, it's not a decision that I think Penn State needs to make this year and probably not even in the next few years, but it's definitely a very tricky debate in what Penn State and how comfortable Penn State is with James Franklin as its head coach, because I think Penn State's going to be a good team under Franklin they've proven that can they be elite which James Franklin stressed in that now famous press conference after the Ohio State loss in 2018 can they get to that elite level under Franklin we don't know will they be able to I, find the guy if Franklin is gone would they be able to find the guy that's going to get them elite we don't know so it, it's just a very hard question to answer and I don't even know if it has an answer. So it's something that I think people are going to be talking about. People have been talking about for multiple years already, probably since 2017 when Penn State blew that game at Ohio State in Columbus and uh, didn't win the Big Ten as a result. But I think this is going to be a question that people are debating for multiple years. It's like it's that type of deal. So I think this is what it's going to be. I think here they're going to let this cycle, this this past cycle, and this next cycle, let that play out, and we'll and they'll assess that. We'll see yeah. if that's the thing. You, I, I, I'd say you give, I give these next two cycles a chance, recruiting cycles. Yeah, I'm with you there, and uh, people, I talk with uh some of my friends and kind of hype up the 2022 class but they say well franklin recruits well every year so what's the difference the difference is franklin doesn't get a five-star quarterback every single year he has one now drew hour we all know he doesn't get a five-star running back every single year he has one now nick singleton he doesn't get a five-star defensive end that i then a son he doesn't get a guy like abdul carter who was a four-star but has played well enough in the limited time he's had this year to where people, including his own teammates, are comparing him to Micah Parsons. 
he doesn't get recruiting classes like this every year. And I definitely think that this 22 recruiting class, especially, and we'll see how the 2023 class ends up, but this class especially deserves a few years and the chance to win a Big Ten championship. I'm definitely with you on that. So, Yeah, I'll give him that because you're stuck with him anyway. Like, there's not – it's going to be astronomical for – you to buy him out and then bring in a, a say a Matt Rule or whoever's available. Yeah, because no one Penn State, they'll have a plan at uh as at coach. They'll have their pick of the litter of who they want. So I'm not worried about them replacing a coach, replacing Prager. That could be done for the right. Because they, they just have to identify who they want as their coach. Or he could be feeling the heat and he flirts with a job, I would let him go. An easy way out. Yeah, uh, we'll see how that plays out. But this is a question that's not going to have an answer, I don't think, for multiple years. But talking about Minnesota, this is episode six of the Victory Again podcast. Joe Spencer, Brandon Walker coming at you from Nittany Sports Now. Minnesota is the annual whiteout game. It's probably the least hype whiteout game in multiple years because, you know, you don't have Ohio State coming in, don't have Michigan coming in, don't have Auburn, which was a novelty, came in last year. But it's still the whiteout, and the stadium's going to be buzzing, and it's a game that non-Penn State fans and non-Big Ten fans are going to be interested to watch because it's a spectacle. So 7.30, ABC, uh, there's storylines aside from the whiteout coming in to this game. A big one is Kirk Soraka, who was at Minnesota, then went to Penn State for the 2020 season, got fired by James Franklin after 2020, and came back to Minnesota before this season. So kind of a revenge game for him, possibly, but maybe an advantage for Penn State because Penn State's defense with Soraka being close enough removed to Penn State uh, that the players on this defense were in the same room with him when he was the offensive coordinator they're going to know some of what Minnesota runs because they saw it at Penn State a few years back. A uh, pair of six-year quarterbacks, if they don't play, and we'll talk about that. Sean Clifford left Michigan's game in the fourth quarter uh, with an injury. We don't know his status. Tanner Morgan left the Illinois game. Michigan's lost to Illinois Saturday with what's believed to be a concussion. We don't know if one or either of them is going to play, uh, so that's a big storyline. Uh, but the biggest concern, I think, for Penn State is that Minnesota is going to replicate what Michigan did and just bully Penn State up front and run the football. Michigan has an elite back in Blake Corum. We saw that Saturday. Minnesota has an elite back, Mohamed Ibrahim, who is averaging more than six yards per carry, is a, better, is a veteran running back, has played in big games before, didn't play in, Mich in Minnesota's loss to Purdue a few weeks back, its first loss of the season. But when he's played, and he's played in five of Minnesota's six games, he's been pretty good. 6.7 yards per carry, 694 yards, nine touchdowns on the ground. Enough said there. So Penn State's going to have its challenges against Minnesota. But, uh, Brandon, what are just some of your general thoughts, pushing Michigan aside, in what's going to happen in the whiteout Saturday night when Penn State plays Minnesota? This is actually a good matchup. Because uh, Minnesota has a tough running game, they got a good defense. There's pretty, they're not, they're like, I would say a lower grade Michigan, and how they play. Uh, we don't know real situation at quarterback. Uh, but if this was a regular, like I would, I would be cons more concerned about them bouncing. Bouncing back because they have, they are like it's James Franklin's team the past few years went down, they stayed down. However, if this was a regular, like say if it was a 12 o'clock noon home game, I'd be, I'd be concerned. I think they get a little bit charged up a little bit. I think the whiteout comes at a perfect time for Penn State, you know what I mean? Because, I mean, because. You don't want like Michigan to beat you twice. One, you could say they are, they did beat beat them twice, but you don't want this game, this Michigan loss to linger through the rest of the season, especially with Ohio State coming up. And 
we'll see what we guess. we'll see what happens there. Uh, I'm guessing the storyline it really is Alar versus Clifford, right? I'm guessing that this is going to be the debate for the rest of the week from fans, media outlets, and people like us. So who do you think should start? If Sean Clifford's healthy, I still think Sean Clifford should be the guy. If he isn't healthy, and I'm talking like not that he's – so let's say Sean Clifford is hurt but healthy enough to play, right? Even just a little bit hurt, I wouldn't play him. If he's 100% good to go, I would send him out there because I don't think he really did anything against Michigan to lose the job. I think he did more to hurt the team against Northwestern two weeks before, to be honest. But I would still start Clifford. But I am moving over to our side more than I was before. I think if Penn State loses to Minnesota or even if Penn State loses to Ohio State, Drew Aller should start for the rest of the year. I'm, I think still, on that. Oh, I'm still on that if he struggles. Because you still have every, put Saturday aside, you still can win, have a chance. You still got a shot. You got to beat Ohio State, which is uh, a dicey proposition. But I give him this. You know what? I'll tell you this. I'll give it. I'll give Clifford. Minnesota, if he's healthy, if he goes, if he gets out of there, great. But Ohio State's the, uh, the like the 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 game, the uh, breaking point game. If he struggles at any point, pull him, pull him. That's how I feel about it. I think he, he Allah should start anyway because I think he is still the, he's the more talented quarterback and. If he's going to be playing three years, you might as well get everything you got out of him. If he's that good, he's he'll be out of there. So I'm I'm not I don't want to just have two and a half years with him. I want to have as much time as I can with Alar and develop that clock early for for him to eventually James Franklin save his bacon because I think his job at the end what Alar is at the time he's eligible to go to the draft if he's eligible that's going to be dictate if he keeps going at Penn State because that buyout's going to get dropped and dropped and he can negotiate and they can find a way to negotiate down that buyout if they want to yeah uh I think Clifford's leash is short and I can see the writing on the wall more so than I did uh last week I'll put it that way I think if he struggles against Minnesota uh, I think you may, I think you can make a switch in game, and that's obviously not something that you want to see because it's a six-year guy giving a lot to the program, playing in the whiteout. But we've seen this before, right? Last year against Illinois, Clifford played hurt, and Penn State suffered one of the worst losses in program history in nine overtimes to a team that came in two and four, I believe it was, and Penn State was four touchdown favorite against, but. Anyway, Franklin was asked about Clifford's status, and like he does with all inter- with all uh, injury questions in his press conferences, he kind of blew the question off, and he said that uh, they're planning. Uh, he said basically they're planning to do their normal rotation, uh, which basically means that they plan on starting Sean Clifford. But people are going to see for themselves tomorrow uh, when media has its uh, weekly uh, practice viewing availability. Jared Puger from Kruger, excuse me, from NSN will be there uh, and he'll be able to report along with many others if Sean Clifford is practicing and how that looks. So the debate uh, pretty much uh, is going to, or the speculation, I should say, is going to end um, probably tomorrow evening when people know like what Clifford's deal is. But I think it's looking likely that Sean Clifford's going to start and uh, we'll just have to see what happens in that regard. But I'm definitely more, I definitely, I'm I'm more of the belief that Auer should start this season than I was probably at any point before after the Michigan game. I'll tell you that. So, Like, I'm thinking you got to get this clock rolling because I don't want to have him for two years. If he's good enough, if he's good for two years, good enough for two years. And they already they burned his red shirt, right? So yeah, five games. It's five games at pressure. Yeah, they burned it. Yeah, but then again, that doesn't really matter too much because 
if he plays two years, he's going to be able to declare for the draft, whether he redshirted freshman year or not. So uh, that's, that's not very significant to me, but going into this uh, Penn state, Minnesota game, I know it's only Tuesday night and we'll have the rest of the week to kind of break things down, uh, change our feelings, uh, what have you, but what are just some of your early thoughts heading into this Penn state, Minnesota game and what's, your gut, your head, whatever, telling you about what's going to happen Saturday night, Brandon. I think Penn State's going to find a way to win. I, they'll find a way to win this whiteout game because I think they'll be focused, charged up. It's going to be another close game, but I think they get it done because, but however, because they're a the better team. I believe so. But I have to size up the uh, rank. The, you know how they, like Tyler Convacero will have the rankings. I think they are the more talented team. Coaching, I think, is about even. I think, I actually think uh, PJ Fleck is maybe a little bit better of a coach than uh, James Franklin. Yeah. And it's hard to compare because it's two different situations. But Anyway, my feeling is that Penn State is going to win this football game, too. I don't really have a score in my mind yet. But one of the benefits, I shouldn't say there were really any benefits to getting embarrassed by Michigan, but because they got embarrassed by Michigan, Penn State's not going to look past anybody. They could be playing Indiana State this week, and I don't think there would be any form of a come down. So if Penn State falls to Minnesota, it's not going to be because it wasn't motivated. I think this team's going to be charged up. It still has a lot to play for, and hopefully for Penn State's sake, the players know that they have a lot to play for because going back before the season, I think if I asked you, Brandon, what your best-case scenario was, you probably would have said 10-2. and two. Uh, That's what I thought was 10-2, and two, and I think the general consensus was that 10 wins was probably the ceiling this team had. And 10 wins is still pretty manageable. You look at the rest of the schedule, Ohio State should be a loss. But you look at Minnesota, which we talked about, Indiana, Rutgers, Michigan State, Mm -hmm. and that's it. I believe I'm missing a game. or Maybe I'm not missing a game. But anyway, every game aside from Ohio State is one that Penn State should win and one that Penn State should be favored in. So I think this team still has a lot to play for, except for maybe a Big Ten championship. But uh, winning 10 games will be a big accomplishment for this team and having the chance to play in the bowl game and win 11 would be big uh, for this team to do. And that's still ahead of it and beating. And that can't happen if they don't beat Minnesota. So Penn State uh, needs – it's going to be ready, I think. I don't think there's any fear of a letdown, a come down. And they're playing a team, Minnesota, that I think has some confidence issues too, losing two in a row to two teams that aren't as good as Penn State. Purdue, Penn State beat earlier. Illinois, although Illinois has been a nice story. I think if Illinois played Penn State, you'd still pick Penn State, right? So I just think that Penn State's going to be charged up and Penn State has the more talented team, the better team, and – that combination is going to lead to a Penn State win. So that's my thought, and I think we're both pretty aligned on that. Yeah, we're good. We, we're, like, in a agreement. So that's what I said. The whiteout is a help. I'd be more concerned, but I, like I said before, I'd be more concerned if it was a regular home game. If it, if it was, like, if it was a regular, normal home game, and it's homecoming. Don't forget about that. So it's going to – be interesting. It's gonna be fun. You'll be there. I'll be at up. I'll be at the crib. You know, chilling Saturday night, watching the watching the game and stuff like that. With the recap, you know how we do. So I'll have an official. I'll have it after uh go through the facts, think about it, watch a little uh scouting on Minnesota, and come through that conclusion. But right now, I will say Penn State wins. Yeah, and the big thing too is that. There's a lot of players, Sean Clifford, including uh, what among them, excuse me, uh, that were on Penn State's team when Minnesota upset Penn State in Minneapolis in 2019. It was Sean Clifford's first loss as a starting quarterback, and it's a game that a lot of players uh, still remember. Nick Tarburton, 
uh, said that Penn State's defense is still watching film of that 2019 team and Tanner Morgan because Kirk Soraka was Minnesota's offensive coordinator back then too. So they've been watching film of that game to see if they can pick anything up. And the motivation obviously is a bonus there. Uh, but we'll see what happens. In the meantime, uh, check out our content on Nittany Sports Now, getting you ready for the Minnesota game. And then when Saturday night comes, uh, I'll be uh, in Beaver Stadium, um, as Brandon mentioned. I'll be bringing you uh, coverage the best I can. And uh, it should be um, a good week ahead, win, lose, or draw. But in the meantime, I'll follow uh, my account, uh, Joe Smelter775, Brandon's account at B Walker to Dawn, our uh, account at Nittany Sports Now, and follow Nittany Sports Now's Facebook account as well until then this has been episode six of the victory again podcast uh for brandon walker and Nitty sports now i'm joe smelter thanks for tuning in